Opposition to the sale has been voiced by the public, honourable friends in the House and independent voices in the field. Nearly 120,000 people have signed a petition calling for an independent review of the options for the bank's future before any shares are sold. This is about more than just the, uh, the numbers on the balance sheet. It's about the uh, people's businesses, their, their jobs, their homes uh, and their lives. Let's not forget that in 2008 it was shareholder-owned banks, commercial banks, who brought the global financial system to its knees. Yes, they were innovative. They created some of the most innovative, toxic financial instruments the world has ever seen. But much of this innovation was what Adair Turner has called socially useless. It served no real economic purpose except to inflate the profits of the banks who produced them, whilst quietly spreading dangerous levels of risk to every corner of our financial system. In other words, the ownership model to which the government is so keen to return RBS is the same model which helped to bring the bank down in the first place. Uh, my fear is that the creation of multiple banks will lead to multiple disynergies and create entities that will find it much harder to access capital markets. Uh, I, it, could be, it could be a very costly distraction. I am very nervous that that will not act in the interests of the broader economy. Um, there are advantages that flow from a very large, very well capitalised and very well regulated uh, bank being able to spread its assets across the UK. We have a banking sector that is brilliant at making money, but fails to use its strength for the rest of the economy. This decision, as it stands at the moment, is based on political expediency rather than the needs of the economy or the stated objections of government policy. Indeed, it actually contradicts elements of government exactly. policy. I certainly believe we should have a more diverse banking sector, we should have more mutuals, we, sh <clears throat> we should have more cooperatives. And when it comes to selling RBS, I'm not the least convinced that we are selling something which we truly understand. If we broke up the bank into 130 pieces, it would reveal its insolvency. So this is not a left-right argument, I would argue. It is about trying to get things right, about trying to make sure that we do deliver a better banking system as a, as a result of intervention in the market. I am at a loss as to why the decision has been taken to return RBS to private hands when the Treasury has not even responded to the concerns raised by the Treasury Select Committee. There is no shortage of ideas when it comes to structural reform of RBS. What's lacking is the political will opposite on the government benches for serious change. We are essentially being told to move along now. There's nothing to see here. Before the sale, the Governor wrote a two-page letter to the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The Chancellor has relied heavily on this. I asked the Governor about it on the 20th of October at the Treasury Select Committee. He also told us that his letter was based on analysis by the Bank of England, but he refused point blank to disclose this analysis. I find this failure to disclose totally unacceptable. The government has provided no real evidence either why RBS should be returned to the private sector in its previous form or why it should happen now. The review did not consider the full range of policy options. Is the timing of this sale in the interests of taxpayers or bank customers? Or does the Chancellor just want to sell off another state asset quickly to make his borrowing figures look better? Is this a decision being taken purely for ideological reasons or one based on expert independent advice? So can the Minister show how the Chancellor arrived at the decision? And in keeping with the call from my honourable friend, the member for Bishop Auckland, if the Minister has the evidence, will the Minister share it with members of this? House. How we treat RBS now will demonstrate whether we have learnt the lessons of the crisis. We don't accept the cases being made to sell off now at a significant loss to the taxpayer, and that's why we do support a full, independent review of all the options before any further shares are sold, and we encourage MPs to support this motion. Harriet Baldwin. In July, the Chancellor sought the advice of the Governor of Bank of England regarding the Government's shareholding. It was the Governor's view that public ownership has largely served its purpose and that it is in the public interest for the Government to begin to return RBS to private ownership. 
Madam Deputy Speaker, in the interest of time, while I recognise that the importance of the issues raised in today's motion um, are extremely uh, serious, the Government cannot support the proposals as written on the order paper. They run contrary to all the evidence that has been presented to us. Instead, we will continue to put in place our long-term economic plan, uh, one which is bringing stability and competition to the UK banking sector. The question is the motion as on the order paper. As many as are of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it.